What's up guys, I'm DK and you're watching Pro Wrestling What If, the series where I look at the different what if scenarios as terms of the world that we call professional wrestling. Jeff Hardy has accomplished many things in his 30 plus years that he's been in the professional wrestling business. Holding the tag team championships on multiple occasions with his brother Matt, having a successful single career by holding the Intercontinental Championship five times as of the recording of this video, but the crowning achievement for Jeff was when he finally won won his first world championship by defeating Triple H and Edge in a triple threat match at Armageddon 2008 to win the WWE Championship. He would only hold the title until the following pay-per-view at Royal Rumble, dropping it to Edge thanks to the interference from Jeff's brother Matt. Both the Hardy brothers would feud with each other going into WrestleMania 25 with Matt winning that match, followed by a match at Backlash in an I Quit match with Jeff winning and ending the feud. Jeff would go on to feud with Edge over the World Heavyweight Championship at Judgment Day, followed by Extreme Rules where then he would capture the championship in a ladder match before being cashed in on by CM Punk and his Money in the Bank briefcase for him to become the champion. Jeff Hardy and CM Punk would feud during the summer of 2009 and the rivalry would end on the August 28, 2009 episode of SmackDown where Hardy would lose a steel cage match and be forced to leave the WWE as per stipulations. In reality, this was to write off Jeff Hardy as he had let his contract expire and chose not to re-sign due to him wanting to heal injuries like a neck injury Injury, two herniated discs in his lower back, and suffering from restless leg syndrome. And people have been wondering the last 15 years as of the recording of this video, what would have happened if Jeff Hardy had stayed around? So that's going to be the topic of today's episode. It's what if Jeff Hardy stayed with WWE in 2009? Now, before I begin this video, I do want to get everyone into the mindset that with this What If video, we have to have pretty much Jeff Hardy sober. Because, of course, a few weeks after Jeff Hardy had let his contract expire, he would get arrested due to drug possession, which would ultimately have Jeff Hardy not sign a new contract with WWE and go with TNA Wrestling. So with Jeff Hardy needing to heal those injuries, having him basically go into rehab and getting himself cleaned up, and especially with the press off of the idea of Jeff Hardy getting arrested. For this video, we're going to be skipping out the rest of 2009 off in order for him to have this successful run. And if you end up enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that like button, share this to all your friends, subscribe, and press the notification bell for when future episodes get released, and leave a comment down below about today's topic or suggesting a future topic for an episode of Pro Wrestling What If. So we're going to be kicking off this video at the Royal Rumble 2010, which I think Think that Jeff Hardy would make his return during the Royal Rumble match and I would have Jeff Hardy actually win the 2010 Royal Rumble match. Now Jeff Hardy in this match is technically a non-contracted WWE superstar considering that he was forced to leave the WWE as per stipulation so he would have been a part of this match as a surprise entrant like they've done with various superstars not under a WWE contract or under a Legends contract over the years. And with Jeff Hardy winning the match, it would actually allow him to at least have one more match. This automatically has Jeff Hardy in the world championship hunt for WrestleMania. And because of Jeff Hardy's return happening at the Royal Rumble, I would think that they would delay Edge's return, where in the real timeline, Edge did make his return at Royal Rumble 2010, and he ended up winning the match. So Edge doesn't win this match in this timeline and doesn't make his return until later on, because I don't think that WWE would want to have two huge returns at once during this match. Now for Elimination Chamber 2010, Jeff Hardy would actually not be a part of this event because there would be an angle of him being attacked by CM Punk stable, the Straight Edge Society, and this would cause Jeff Hardy to be on the shelf for a few weeks, especially when you're coming back from serious injuries like the herniated discs and especially a neck injury that WWE would want to play its safe with Jeff Hardy, especially with the style of wrestling that he does, to where they don't want him competing so often until they get to WrestleMania. 
So this would be a way to write off Jeff Hardy and add heat onto the Straight Edge Society, in which during the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, the same World Heavyweight Championship match in the chamber would happen, which in the real timeline, we had seen Chris Jericho win the match thanks to interference by Shawn Michaels, which would be the same thing that would happen, except I think that CM Punk would actually be the winner of the match and win the World Heavyweight Championship. Of course, at WrestleMania 26, you probably would still be able to have Edge versus Jericho, but it wouldn't need the World Championship. While with CM Punk winning, we know where this is exactly going. Which then leads to WrestleMania 26, the 2010 Royal Rumble winner Jeff Hardy versus CM Punk for the World Heavyweight Championship, in which there would be stipulations placed during this match. If Jeff Hardy had won the match, not only does he become the World heavyweight champion, but he is once again under contract with WWE. But if CM Punk wins this match, Jeff Hardy would be forced to once again leave WWE and would not return under any circumstances, even including the loophole of being a surprise entrant at any Royal Rumble events. Which of course, we would see Jeff Hardy defeat CM Punk and become the brand new World Heavyweight Champion, so that way he is officially under contract as a WWE superstar again. Extreme Rules 2010, we would have CM Punk face the newly crowned champion Jeff Hardy in an Extreme Rules match for the World Heavyweight Championship, in which during this match, there will be a stipulation placed where the Straight Edge Society are banned from ringside. And it makes sense for this match to happen at Extreme Rules since this event one year ago is where the rivalry basically started with Punk's cash -in. In which in this match, Jeff Hardy would retain the World Heavyweight Championship against CM Punk, and once the match is over, the Straight Edge Society would attack Jeff Hardy, making it a curse because two years in a row at Extreme Rules, he would be cashed on by the Money in the Bank winner, which was Jack Swagger, and Jack Swagger would become the brand new World Heavyweight Champion. Over the Limit 2010, Jeff Hardy would not have his rematch clause right away for the World Heavyweight Championship, but at this event, I would actually have Jeff and Matt Hardy reuniting as the Hardy Boys against the Straight Edge Society in a tag team match. Now, even though Matt and Jeff did have this high profile feud in 2009, you did see Matt and Jeff make up later on in the year during the initial rivalry between CM Punk and Jeff Hardy. So I think now this is more of a battle with Jeff Hardy and the Straight Edge Society rather than just Jeff Hardy and CM Punk. So obviously I feel WWE would take advantage on another Hardy Boys reunion and then going off against CM Punk and his partner of choosing, probably most likely Luke Gallows. With the stipulation that if the Hardy Boys win, we would have CM Punk be forced to shave his head bald, which was the stipulation to the Over the Limit match, but between CM Punk and Rey Mysterio in the real timeline. And if the Straight Edge Society wins, then both members of the Hardy Boys would be forced to join the Straight Edge Society, which once again, this was the stipulation in the real timeline, the Hardy Boys would defeat the Straight Edge Society, and this would pretty much be the end of the feud. Fatal 4-Way 2010. This is where Jeff Hardy would get his rematch clause as he competes in a Fatal 4-Way match against Rey Mysterio, CM Punk, and of course the current champion Jack Swagger for the World Heavyweight Championship. Which this was pretty much the same Fatal 4 match as the real timeline besides Jeff Hardy would be taking the place of the Big Show. In which for this match, I actually would still have Rey Mysterio become the brand new World Heavyweight Champion, and I will explain in a little bit why I chose that instead of originally thinking about actually once again putting the World Heavyweight Championship on Jeff Hardy. Money in the Bank 2010, Jeff Hardy would compete in the Money in the Bank ladder match for the World Heavyweight Championship contract, which would obviously feature him, Big Show, Christian, Cody Rhodes, Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre, Kane, and Kofi Kingston, which those were the same competitors in the real timeline besides 
besides Jeff would be replacing his brother Matt, which I think would make sense considering Matt Hardy in the real timeline had already competed in the Money in the Bank ladder match that took place at WrestleMania 26, in which just like the real timeline, Kane would win the contract. And this is where I explained earlier why I had Rey Mysterio actually win the title in this timeline. So we still get the moment of the same night cash in on Rey Mysterio, which of course would lead to their match at SummerSlam and the Kane and Undertaker rivalry going into the rest of 2010, and especially the fact that I didn't want Jeff Hardy to be cashed in on not only twice between a span of one year, but technically twice in the same year if he had also got cashed in on by Kane at the Money in the Bank event. SummerSlam 2010, I think that Jeff Hardy would challenge Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, in the real timeline, Dolph Ziggler had defended the Intercontinental Championship against Kofi Kingston. And with Jeff Hardy around, I felt that he shouldn't have been left off of the SummerSlam event, especially because one year prior at the 2009 event, Jeff Hardy had main evented the show with CM Punk. So I feel Jeff Hardy would take the place of Kofi Kingston in this timeline and challenge for the Intercontinental Championship. And just like the real timeline, the match would end in a no contest so that we lead to the next pay-per-view. Which that next pay-per-view is Night of Champions, which once again, Jeff Hardy would challenge Dolph Ziggler for for the Intercontinental Championship. And just like the real timeline, there would be the stipulation that if Dolph Ziggler gets counted out or disqualified, he would automatically lose the championship. I mean, when you have a match end in a no contest, of course, there's gonna have to be another match where we do have a definitive winner. And of course, just like the real timeline, Dolph Ziggler would retain the Intercontinental Championship, but this time, of course, against Jeff Hardy instead of Kofi Kingston, like the real timeline. The next pay-per-view would be the Hell in a Cell 2010 event in which Jeff Hardy actually does not compete at this event. This is one of those cases where it was very difficult to actually find a spot for Jeff Hardy. You can't exactly put him into the World Championship match because of course this is the time where Kane and The Undertaker were feuding with each other. So there's just no way we can actually interrupt this feud realistically by adding a participant into it. And if he's being a part of the show, it would have been involved with that six-man tag match that would have been a dark match of this event. Bragging Rights 2010, in which Jeff Hardy would be a part of the Team Raw versus Team SmackDown 14-man elimination tag match. Team Raw had CM Punk, Ezekiel Jackson, John Morrison, The Miz, R-Truth, Santino Morella, and Sheamus against Team SmackDown, which had Alberto Del Rio, Big Show, Edge, Jack Swagger, Kofi Kingston, Rey Mysterio, and this time, Jeff Hardy. Hardy, which in the real timeline, I believe Tyler Rex was a part of that match. But if you were to choose whether you're going to have Jeff Hardy or Tyler Rex in this position, you're most likely are going to choose Jeff Hardy. And just like the real timeline, Team SmackDown would win the match. I mean, when you read off even the names of Team Raw, the star power of SmackDown, which is so much better than what we had for Raw, so it wouldn't have made sense for Raw to win this match. Survivor Series 2010, which I think that Jeff would be a part of the Team Mysterio versus Team Del Rio Survivor Series Elimination Tag Match. Team Mysterio would feature Rey Mysterio, Big Show, Jeff Hardy in this case, Kofi Kingston, and MVP against Team Del Rio, which featured Alberto Del Rio, Cody Rhodes, Drew McIntyre, Jack Swagger, and Tyler Rex. Which I think Jeff Hardy in this case is replacing Chris Masters in this match around this time. I believe Chris Masters was already on his way out of the WWE, so it wouldn't have really made too much of a difference, which of course, like the real timeline, Team Mysterio would defeat Team Del Rio. And the final pay-per-view of 2010 was TLC, Tables, Ladders, and Chairs, which I think Jeff Hardy would be inserted into the TLC match for the World Heavyweight Championship, making it a fatal five-way match now. Now, I will admit firsthand that this was kind of a little bit lazy booking in a way by just inserting Jeff Hardy into this match. But at the same time, you have a competitor like Jeff Hardy who is known for tables, ladders, and chairs. So it kind of would be dumb if you actually left Jeff Hardy out of a match like this, especially if you had Edge and Jeff Hardy in this match and you could possibly in a way recreate the spear moment that we've seen at WrestleMania 17. Highly doubt that that would happen, but you know if you have Edge and Jeff Hardy in the same match, 
match, you're gonna get some magic. Of course, Jeff Hardy at some point could probably do a swanton off the ladder and go through a table, which causes him to basically be out for the rest of the match. I know it made sense for Rey Mysterio and Del Rio to be in this match because of their feud, and Edge was feuding with Kane around this time, so it made sense for all four of them to be put in this match. And of course, just like the real timeline, Kane would lose the World Heavyweight Championship and Edge would become the brand new champion. And if you guys enjoyed Jeff Hardy's run in 2010 in this timeline, let me know down below. I may make a part two where we talk about Jeff Hardy possibly wrestling in WWE in 2011.